Hey, what's up? And welcome to Hack My Growth. In this episode, we're going to be talking about why website speed matters and more importantly, what you can do about it. Are you looking to grow your business, but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching, please hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you join our community. And don't forget to turn on alerts. That way you know every time we publish a video. So we're gonna be talking today about website speed. We're gonna talk and about why it matters. And then we're gonna go into a little bit of what you can do about it as a website admin or a small business owner who runs their own website. So first, let's talk about why it matters. Well, the first thing is that Google's going mobile. And you may be thinking, well, what does this have to do with speed? Well, it has a lot to do with speed. So mobile index has been rolling out and it's rolling out more broadly. So more and more insights are being indexed uh, mobile first, which means Google's looking at how your site appears and performs on mobile first. And then they also take into account the desktop version of your site because that's also still very important. Now, this means that you need to have a mobile friendly site, it means that your content needs to uh, be able to be accessed and really interacted with on a mobile device. This also means that you need to have a fast loading site because it's going to help people on mobile devices to connect with your site, to connect with your content, and it needs to perform well, not just on a, a Wi-Fi or, or a static internet connection, but also on a mobile internet connection. Now. The algorithm does look into speed and looks into speed. It also looks into how your site is being engaged with mobily. Is it easy to work with? Is it friendly? Is it fast? Because if it's not able to be interacted with, it's not easy for a user, it's going to be less relevant in the eyes of the algorithm. And if you can't connect with it, if you can't use it, then why would Google assume that it's good content or that it's a good website? They should actually display it and allow that site to earn some rankings. Now, you can read a lot more. Uh, just by checking out the uh, webmasters blog on Google. Uh, we have a link right there below too. So how does the world connect? We've got 3.7 billion mobile users worldwide. Uh, and now mobile devices are more than half of all website traffic. Now this is up an astronomical amount since 2009. We just look back 10 years and we see that not even a full percentage of people were accessing the web on a mobile device. But today, more than half of all internet users, more than all web traffic is coming from a mobile device. And again, we have to think about how these mobile devices are connected. Now, this is the expansion of 4G coverage. Now, we've seen um, more and more of this coming out across the web, but it doesn't mean that everybody in the world has access to 4G. But it does show that, as you can see, Speeds are starting to get a lot faster, uh, especially here in Northern Europe, a lot over here in Asia, uh, even in most parts of the United States. But there are still some people who have much slower speeds, uh, much slower connection speeds. They may not be fully 4G. They may not always be on 4G. And, and I know everybody's talking about 5G and all these other types of connections. The reality is, is not everyone in the world has access to extremely fast Internet. So. Let's talk a little bit more about speed. This comes from an article by Think with Google, and it's talking about understanding speed, and especially mobile. And the reason we're focusing on mobile is that now mobile is more than half of the internet's traffic. This doesn't mean this, that your desktop doesn't matter. It still matters extremely uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, mobile is, is something that you need to put an emphasis on. So this is what Google had to say. Since they looked at the mobile page feed last year, the average time it takes for a mobile landing page to load foliage has dropped seven seconds, which sounds great. But the bad news is it still takes on an average about 15 seconds for a page to fully load. Uh, if you consider that 53% of mobile sites, um, they leave the page after it takes longer than three seconds, that's telling you that a majority of websites are getting a lot of bounces because if a website's taking 15 seconds to load, we're impatient. What do we do? We leave. And the average is 15 seconds. But most users will leave within three seconds. There's a huge gap there. And while it's getting better, like it's dropped by seven seconds, it's nowhere near what a user expects. Their data also shows that when more than half of web traffic comes from mobile, mobile conversion rates are much lower than desktop rates. So speed equals revenue. A lot of sites are much faster on the desktop side of things. 
Uh, so their conversion rates are higher. And a lot of times desktop sites are easier to use. But because the user experience and the speed has been so poor on mobile devices, it's dropped the conversion rates. And even as traffic now um, is coming on 4G instead of like 3G, a majority of mobile sites are still slow and they have too many elements and they're extremely bloated. And this doesn't mean we can't have really good looking sites. It just means that some sites are way over designed and they have too much going on, especially on the JavaScript side, that it's really weighing them down. And if you can remove some of those things that really aren't essential and speed sites up, you might actually see some pretty awesome results. And this is why you should really start thinking about it. So when a page load time goes from one second to three seconds, the probability uh, of a bounce increases 32%. That means if your site was at one second and then moves up to three seconds, now you have a 32% higher chance of somebody leaving. When it goes from one second to five seconds, uh, the probability of his bounce increases now to 90%. So once it goes past that three seconds, it's going up astronomically. When it goes for the six seconds, 106%. When it goes to 10 seconds, again, we're talking at 123% increase the probability, probability of them leaving your website. Speed plays a huge role whether or not the user is going to engage with your site and engage with your business. So now you might be thinking, how should I get started? Well, Google had a tool called PageSpeed. Now PageSpeed is actually built into a tool called Lighthouse. And you can learn about it um, from developers.google.com or slash web tools, uh, Lighthouse. You can also just Google Lighthouse Chrome. Uh, it's a Chrome extension. And what it allows you to do is perform a very detailed audit on your website. Uh, once it comes up, you just hit the perform the audit button and there it goes. It also comes up in the web tools. As you see here, you've got elements, console, sources, and then audits. It will do that as well. And it's going to give you some very awesome insights on how you can begin to improve the speed of your website. So where should you begin? Well, the first contentful paint, the FCP, this measures when a user sees a visual response from a page. Um, if somebody sees your site loading, they're gonna stay there and engage quicker. This needs to be uh, just the really meaningful content, the, the stuff that people, you know, are words coming up on the screen, right? The second part of that is first meaningful paint. So this is looking at the response visually from a site, and then meaningful paint is also important. This is where it's gonna say, you know, is there a header text or something coming in where a user knows where they're at? This is an area you really need to focus on speeding up because the faster this is, the more likelihood that a user will actually engage with your site. Now, the time to interact is how long it takes for your page to be fully um, engaging or interactive. Now, as we saw in that previous, most sites are about 15 seconds. The one that we tested here is at 11.3 seconds, which is a little bit better. But again, it's still not fully active and fully engaging for a user. Uh, within that three seconds, which means the site needs to have some work done on it to be faster and more user in more user friendly. So these are areas you really want to focus on because this is what's going to grab somebody's attention and make sure that they stay. So what do we look at? We want to look at things like render blocking resources and your images and then deferring the non-priority scripts on your site. As you see at this site, one of the areas you can easily speed it up is going to be serving next-gen formats. It means serving the images where they're supposed to fit by prioritizing by device. So maybe a desktop or a mobile size and using different types of web formats in order to make sure that they're being served most efficiently as possible. And also making sure that they're the right sizes, making sure that you don't have these really large bloated images that don't need to be there. So right here, this site can do a lot just from some image optimization can really speed up the site. Now we also want to look at like CSS, you know, maybe you're not using some code. Maybe you just have extra code in your site that doesn't need to be there. Well, you can remove those things and speed them up. You can also defer CSS or deferring JavaScript that's non-essential to the page. Now, a lot of people put these in and they use what's called async tag, which tells it to, you know, kind of push this code down and don't load it until, you know, the more meaningful stuff loads. The reality is, is a lot of browsers, the way they interact with the, the asynchronous code is they're still loading it behind the scenes, which is slowing your page down. If you defer it or you place it lower in the page and defer it, it's actually going to have those, those non-essential JavaScript elements and CSS elements to load later in the page. And this will speed it up astronomically. 
It may sound a little bit uh, hard to do, but it's actually not that. It's just really placing the async out with defer. Make sure you're testing all this stuff. Obviously, you don't want your website to break. And if you have any of the essential JavaScript, then obviously you want that to load appropriately. Now, again, you don't want to just settle for average. If you go and your website's loading in that one, one second, and now it's loading at three seconds, your increase to 3.2%. If the site's loading at five seconds, the probability increases to 90. This speed, this, this speed um, kind of example here of what happens when your page takes longer to load should make every webmaster, every website owner start to say, I need to take this more seriously. At the end of the day, your website is your digital front door. If you want people to engage with your business, you need to have a fast loading website. If you got any questions, please comment below. We would love to continue the conversation with you. And until next time, happy marketing. Are you looking to grow your business, but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in.